Yes, it's Monday, and what a wonderful time to talk about ghosts. Well, as you all know, we're away on holiday still. But don't worry, we'll be back all guns blazing next week. So whilst we're away, what we're going to do is we're going to play a Patreon episode from much earlier on within our Patreon career. Now, if you were a Patreon, of course, you'd be getting two new episodes this week because I release two episodes every week for our Patreons only. And over on Patreon, there's over 200 episodes, one per week where I do a bit of a ramble. I just say things off the top of my head, have a general conversation. And the second one where we have a paranormal or try to have a paranormal themed episode. You'll recall back when we were starting out and for the last couple of years, really, the shows did take on a bit of a rambly context, the main show that you're listening to now. And therefore, a lot of that's been pushed to Patreon. So if you're the sort of person who likes background noise, which occasionally will make you laugh, sometimes will make you scared, well, and other times make you go, what the flip? Then head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And if you've signed up recently and are wondering, where's my song? Where's my thank you song? That will, of course, come when we return next Monday. But in the meantime, and in between time, this is me and Becca doing a Patreon show from the past. Live from Liverpool, we need to talk about ghosts. Patreon Podcast with Kevin Eustace. Hello, you wonderful, beautiful, dare I say sexy. Yes, I do say sexy. Patreons, I'm Kev. And I'm Becca. See, that's a uh, ha See how it's evolved now? You wasn't even on the show weeks ago. Now we're like doing a I'm Jeff and I'm Jane. Sort of thing. And it's good morning with me and good morning with you. Yes, well, you you don't know what you're doing there, but you don't know what you're doing. But basically, she's looking away and say, why am I even here? But basically, you're just taking off the two Ronnies there. Do you know that? Yes, it's I know. Which, I don't patronise and you don't know what you're doing there. Because the good... Yeah, yeah, I know the two Ronnies. I'm Do also you know British. the two Ronnies? Of course I know the two Ronnies. I'm also British. It's good night from me. And it's good night from him. Okay. Yes, I, see, I had to get it in there so that you believe. I did, yeah, yeah. I thought you were too young. You no, thought it was well past, you think? No. Oh, there you go. No, because they replay it every Christmas. Yes, they do. And if you don't know what the two Ronnies are, you should watch it because it's dead funny. Um, it was two, like, 70s comedians, Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett. The two Ronnies, mm. of course. And they do, like, sketch shows. And some of them are brilliant. Yeah. It's uh, Four Candles is the sketch everyone knows, isn't it? Where he wants handles for his forks. But he goes into the shop and says, four candles. And the guy gives him four candles. Mm. He goes, no, handles for me forks. And mop heads. It's a moped. I've made that one up. But, you know, you get the gist. Yeah, no, the other one's less than that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. God, you're not patronising at times. I am, aren't I? Yeah. I'm sorry about Yesterday, that. he explained, mansplained, buying jewellery to me. <laughs> 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 Literally, I? how jewellery comes in a box. Now, which of us do we think might have opened jewellery more times in our lives? And he was literally mansplaining how, how it, and that I was wrong and, again, didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't say you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not that rude. But you, you literally just said on the show, you don't know what you're oh, talking about. Oh, we did, about. didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. That's a bit... That was, God, that's within a minute of shitting on yourself, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Um, yeah, very good. Also, on the tour, they used to do a thing which I used to watch in my nans when it was replayed on an afternoon. It really made me laugh. They used to do, uh, there was two funny, like, long, they used to try and do two serious sketches that were, like, quite long formats within the show. Mm. And they told the story week on week, like it was a continuing saga. And one was The Worm That Turned. And it was one where women had taken all the positions of men in society. And they'd become, like, a military force occupying the nation. Like, they took over, done a revolt, a revolution. And therefore, men had to, like effeminate and dress up as women and women were dressed in like army uniforms so like them two would be in the shop like with her and that song going like the handmaid's tale mm. but the men would be the women and the yeah. women would all be like the men in the handmaid's oh, tale basically I understand, yeah. um, maybe that's where she got the idea for the handmaid's tale oh my god uh, you never know you never know and the other thing they'd done was called the phantom raspberry blower of old london town and it used to make me howl because it was based on jack the ripper so it was set in a similar sort of time and he'd have a top hat and a cape, like the drawings of Jack the Ripper. But he would just, like as two people would be talking in the street, he'd come out behind them, lift up his cape and go, and they'd go, oh, and report it to the police. And it was like about the detective trying to catch him. It was dead good. 
fans out. Yeah, no, you're really selling this. I'm sure there's going to be. I'm sure Mark's in X Men's going to be scratching their heads because there's going to be a sudden rush and all the Come On Wise videos. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're talking oh, about. Too funny, too funny. We well, anyway, yeah. Google the Phantom Raspberry Brower of old London times. It's worth it. So, Becca, how are you? I'm okay. What do you know about the paranormal? Because it's Paranormal Sunday. I know loads about the paranormal, as I have proven when we have done paranormal quizzes, and I have scored considerably higher than your average person. Yes, but only by repeating the Enfield poltergeist. It's not my fault. That's always right. That's very true. Um, okay, so um, we're just going to discuss the paranormal in general today. I'm, I'm just going to read short, sharp snippets from a book I've got. Okay. And we can talk about them as we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one, I just wanted, I read one, I thought, oh, you know where this is, so I'm going to mention it. It's only a short one. Okay. Vicar's daughter, Elsie Marshall, was just 21 years old in 1893 when she was murdered by bandits in China, where she worked as a missionary. She's believed to be the invisible being which brushes past staff of the library, which now occupies her former home in Blackheath, London. So she died in China, but a ghost is in Blackheath? Yeah. How does that work? It's gone home. How did it get there? Well, we don't know enough. Literally, the only thing you know about ghosts is Enfield, so we don't know enough. And I don't know enough. Um, but Blackheath, have you been to Blackheath Library? I haven't been to the library, no. I've been to Blackheath. Are you aware of where the library is in Blackheath? Um, I don't think I am, no. There you go. No. I know the Heath. I know some of the pubs in it. I know where so the Heath, fireworks. do they mean like Heath? That was dead quiet, by the way. Don't mumble. Oh. Rarely you do it yourself at the service. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome again. Right, um, but Heath. So the Black Heath's actually a Heath, is it? Like, yeah, yeah, Black, yeah. Black Heath is it's like the Heath. It's the big the a field is a yeah, Heath, is it? Yeah, like huge fields, and then it's that's at the back of Greenwich Park. So you can get from Black Heath to Greenwich just by walking through like nice scenery. So, do we know anything about the uh, etymology of Black Heath? Is it called the Black Heath due to the plague or anything? I think there is something to do with the plague back in there, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, I need to kind of have a Google of that, because it'd be... I mean, I find... I know that it's a very uh, upmarket place, isn't it? Like, yeah, the rich yeah, people very, with um, Black yeah, Heath. Yeah, it's very affluent. Um, but, yeah, there is something to do with it. And the reason I know this is that when I was in uni, my friends started dating a guy... Who was in Blackheath? Yeah, and at one point she said, "Blackheath, I'm not going there if the plague's there." <laughs> We're like, um, "Yeah, no, it's not there now." <laughs> okay, well, interestingly, this says a residential district in southeast London, mainly in the boroughs of Lewisham and Greenwich, a large heath formerly notorious for highwaymen. Ooh. There you go. Why is Blackheath yeah. called Blackheath? Um, oh, and it's a little. So we've just busted a myth here. Because I, I, I thought I did read something like there was a plague pit or something. Right. Um, Blackheath was so called because it appeared a darker colour than the green fields beside the Thames, which it overlooked. Mm-hmm. The soil was so dark, there were plants which... Uh, sorry, the soil was dark and so were the plants which grew there. The name has nothing to do with the plague or the Black Death. But was the plague there? Yeah, of course it was there. Well, just, just because it's it's not named after the plague doesn't mean the plague was heav- wasn't heavily there. It also says it's the site of England's first golf club. There you go. But it is the notorious haunt of highwaymen due to the people of richness who lived in Greenwich That's Park. It. and the You've been side. to Blackheath? I have been to Blackheath. I went to... Uh, we went to the pub there. Yeah, we went to uh, an O'Neill's there, O'Neill's. didn't we? Yeah. Um, I wonder if I've got any stake to the O'Neill's fortune with like me being related distantly to the O'Neill's. To the O'Neill's? Yeah, well, the, the O'Neill's that my nan's related to, or was related... Well, she, she still is, but she's dead. But she was related to the... Apparently O'Neill's in Wexford or around there, they're the company, they do all of the Gaelic football tops, you know, like it's a big mm. manufacturing industry. Yeah. And they're the ones she's related are to. We sure, are you sure it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah. O'Neill's? Yeah, that's, that's the same O'Neill's. I don't think it's the same O'Neill's as the pub chain. Mm. But she is, she's related to the O'Neill's who do the, the Gaelic football tops. Right. Somewhere along the line. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. So now, now I want to ask you a, question, a personal question. Oh, Okay. Bit, it's a bit... Back on a topic I know more about. Yeah. Me. It's yeah. a little bit of a, a touchy subject, this. <laughs> right, excellent. And I'll see what I mean. Have you ever heard of the Hand of Glory? Yes. No, the Hand of God. I'm thinking of the Hand of God. Oh. Yes, you are thinking of the World Cup game Maradona. where Maradona handballed. Yes. And I actually also associate it with Jersey Zuzek in the... Champions League final um, during the infamous comeback because 
So for those who don't know, tell me what year is it? I don't know what year uh, it was. Two thousand one was it? In Istanbul. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know the year, but in Istanbul, Liverpool Champions League final. Liverpool football club. Huge this is. match. Um, I'll come half time. Liverpool three nil down. Three nil down. It's a tough yeah. one. Some of the some of the, the against fans what, the best side in Europe at the time. Yeah, some of the fans who I would raise eyebrows at were actually leaving the stadium. It was that bad. Like morale was low, and. Steven Gerrard, star player, is heavily credited, and rightly so, with turning the match around. And he's he from Heighton, isn't he? My he is, hometown. Yeah, he's from Heighton, yeah, yeah. Liverpool, Bowen Brass. Um, he came back on in the, in the second half, scored a goal, and very much kind of changed the attitude, changed the tune. He, uh, You can't see me gesturing because this is audio, but he kind of, he was like whipping, but he was saying like, it was like a come on move, like, yeah. we can do, you know, we, this, it's a game of the kind of thing. basically. Yes. Yeah, um, and he did turn it around, right? And he got to um, he he got it to three all to three all mm. come come full time. Yes, come full time. Now this was back in the days of the golden goal. So the golden goal was basically you would have extra minute of uh, extra thirty minutes of half. Yeah, you'd have two fifteen minutes halves, wouldn't you? Yeah. After if it was a draw at full time. Yes, when you needed a winner, for example, like in a cup yeah. final. Um, but it was whoever scored first that won. Yeah, that won the match. And back in those days, it, they don't do goal and goal anymore. I quite liked it. I thought it was added an element mm. of excitement. But um, yeah, there you go. Um, but what isn't mentioned... Now, Stephen Gerrard is heavily credited with that, and rightly so, because he did completely turn the game around. Yeah. Um, but what isn't mentioned that often is that during golden goal, they, they, they went on the attack, and the basically the ball was went and, or like on target, and Jersey Dudek dived to save it and pushed it back out. But they rebounded it again, and it was it was going in again, and he's already he was already on the floor to save it. And this is where I, th- I, I what I always consider the hands of God because this arm just came up out of nowhere, and he managed to like swipe it away. Now, if that had gone in, we'd have lost, and people yeah. forget that. And it would it was it was that exact moment. It was like how uh, it was really amazing that he did that because yeah. he was already on the ground. He'd already saved it. He thought his job was done for that second, yeah, and yeah. they rebounded it and boom, for back it, and he and he was right up and. And then they went to, went on Liverpool went on to win on penalties, didn't they? Yeah. It's uh, the one of the most dramatic comebacks in, in football history, and it's there've been films made about it, and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, they even, they even did a 10, 10 year anniversary at the arena, didn't they? Yeah, they did yeah. A, a re-show, a, a re-show, and it sold and out. It sold out. Yeah. Ten thousand people went to yeah. see it again ten years later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, I must say, I know Rin listens. Um, hello, Rin. By the way, Hi, and Rin. Rin, Rin put the cutest comment on Facebook the other day um, because obviously. At Rins in the States, and not many people over there follow the Premier League football. Mm. And uh, awesome. Liverpool were in the League Cup final recently, and uh, so they got to the final of the League Cup, which is basically every team in every division of the Football League in the UK go into a tournament. And they got Liverpool got to the final, and anyway, they went on to win it. And um, it went, but they won it on pens. Right, again, they won on penalties. So I put, as a sarcastic status, because I'm that sort of tit, wow, the most exciting pens I've ever seen. I found a Bic, a paper mate, and now a fountain pen. This kitchen drawer's outstanding, right? Because you're so funny. You because see? I'm so funny. So you were, you were, you were equating penalties, penalties with... to pens, because yeah. they're known as pens. Yeah. And Rin, God bless her lovely, innocent soul, left a, a comment that said, are you packing up to move now, or is this just a general route through the junk drawer? <laughs> so I said, I'm really sorry, Rin. It was a sarky post. Liverpool just won a trophy, and the game went to penalties. And she went, oh, well, Woot, that's good too. So good thank too. you, Rin. And I apologise that I suckered you in with a crap joke. Um, but anyway, none of this is related to the hand of glory. Okay. Or as it was previously known, the hands of grisly gr- lo- glory. So you'll know this when I start talking about it. And you also missed the joke when I said, I've got a personal question for you. It wasn't personal, but you then bandied on about Liverpool's Well, I, f- I saw an opening. <laughs> you did, you took it, yeah. I went for it. So, I'll say it verbatim what it says here. It's only a short paragraph, but you'll know what it is. Tell me, shout when you know what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Right. So I'll start talking and you say, I is, know what it okay. is. Okay, is it something to do with, if you touch it or try and steal it, you'll die? No. Okay. But, but theft is in there. Thieves in the 18th century tried to ensure success for their crimes by invoking the aid of the dead. The villains believed a candle gripped in the cut-off hand of a man who died on the gallows yes, had the supernatural thought. power to stupefy anyone they wished to rob. In the 1790s, a traveller in woman's, woman's? 
That's what it says. A woman's clothing arrived at the old spittle inn, which stood in Stainmore between Barnard Castle and Brow, on windswept Bows Moor in County Durham. The new arrival asked only to be allowed to doze by the fire before continuing her journey. The landlord offered a maid to sit with the visitor. The maid was suspicious, for she was sure she'd spotted trousers peeping below the skirts of the, in speech marks, woman. The maid pretended to be asleep. When all was quiet, the traveller pulled out a hand taken from the body of an executed felon and wedged a candle between the dead fingers. He recited, Let those who sleep sleep on. Let those who are awake be awake. The man then unlocked the door and called softly to accomplices waiting outside. The watchful maid wasted no time. She rushed the door, slamming it shut and bolting it, and the would-be raiders were locked outside. She then dashed upstairs to rouse her employee, or employer, but she could not wake him. Downstairs, the door was being smashed in by the candle. By the gang, by the gang, even. <laughs> the candle was still burning in its macabre holder, and the girl remembered the legend that only extinguishing the flame with milk broke its spell. She grabbed a jug of skimmed milk from the kitchen and upended it over the hand. The flame died, and as it did, the landlord woke up and came downstairs. The thieves promised to leave once their candle and hand were returned. <laughs> <laughs> but they were forced to flee empty-handed when the innkeeper opened fire with his shotgun. The grisly candle holders were called the Hands of Glory. And some similar stories have been heard in other parts of England, France, Belgium and Ireland. One encyclopedia of superstition lists the mysterious ingredients of the candle as the fat of a hanged man, virgin wax and Lapland sesame. I have I had heard something like this. I thought it was more to do with the light not going out or the light only being viewable to the person holding the hands. So that's why it was really helpful for thieves because they go in in the dark. Oh, I've protected. not I've not heard that pop. That would make yes. sense too. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was meant to... I didn't know about sleep then. Yeah, it was, I knew, that was what I knew, that if you had the the hand of glory, it would... Um, I didn't know that you had the, ta- the, the candle had to be made from the fat of the dead man and... All that sort of stuff. How embarrassing could that have been for you then? If you just put a normal, if you got a severed God, hand imagine you put a birthday man. candle and then everyone would be awake on. What the fuck is that? Yeah. I'd be like, you doing? chopped off a hand. Balls of birthday Why is candle. it not working? I'm going to check the instructions and you're going, no, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, okay, the dragoon's hand. There's another thing here. This is a short snippet. The ghostly hand of Trumpet Major. Of Trumpet? That's his name. Oh no, Trumpet Major. So like, he must be a. It must be a, like an army position that you're the major of the trumpet. So, I mean, well, they have to look into what? that. That's what it says. <laughs> right. The ghostly hand of trumpet major Blanford ha- haunts the dorset village of Tarrant Hinton. Blanford was a member of the British Army's famed dragoons, but he enjoyed a spot of poaching in his spare time. Can you enjoy a spot of something illegal? Yeah. Well, I enjoy um, a spot of murder in my own I enjoy part, a spot so. of pickpocketing, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll come on to that in a bit. He and some other men were illegally stalking deer in the grounds of Carbon Chase on the 16th of December 1780. They were surprised by gamekeepers. Several men were wounded. One of the keepers later died during a bitter gun battle. Fucking hell, he really wanted to save them deer. Fair play. Blanford lost his hand but escaped to London where he died. The severed hand was buried in Dorset Churchyard in Pimpin. And locals say it sometimes appears in search of the arm to which it was once attached. Why would you bury a hand? Well, what that's would you do so with weird. it? Well, I don't know, but I just feel like that's really weird, very just a hand. Sell it to Lewis as a, as a glove model. Um, anyway, so... That maid was brave, wasn't she? That maid was brave, yeah. I think we should all... Well, I don't know what, what, was the, what the... She stopped them from robbing, but we should thank her, I suppose. Um, what was I going to say then? Oh, yeah. So what I said, should you really, like, pour an illegal activity is something you like to do in your spare time. Mm. It reminds me of an anecdote which is hysterical. Remember when I wasn't in that film? Yes. Um, which is funny in its own right. I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but for those who are new listeners, there was a film with Ju- there's a film based on a book called Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Yeah, that's the name of the film as well. That's the name of the film as well. And basically there's this very famous American actress whose name escapes me. But she fell out of favour and became an elderly woman. And this Scouse guy in real life, true story, from Liverpool obviously, um, kind of fell in love with her. And she came over to Liverpool. Yeah, there was a considerable age difference. Also. Yeah, considerable like, age difference. Yeah, but she was like in in the fifties or sixties. She was a huge star. Mm. And she came over to Liverpool, and they stayed in a relationship. And she died in Liverpool. Yeah. But the film was about him introducing her to a family, and the lad in the main actor is Billy Elliot, the guy who played Billy Elliot, mm. and it had Julie Walters was his mother, and all these A list actors. Anyway, little old caveat. 
answered an ad to be an extra in that film. He's like, I could be an extra. So yeah. could be an extra. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Go. So it was set in the 80s, and uh, I turned up with... For this is the first funny part. I turned up at the casting in my actual glasses. Mm-hmm. And as I was leaving the casting, one of the prop managers said, do you mind putting your glasses back in the prop department? <laughs> And he was serious, and I went, these are mine. <laughs> anyway, and then he made me shave my moustache into this weird, horrible, like, 80s porn moustache. Yeah, moustache. it's like handlebar. Yeah, thing. but you had to walk the streets to live colour. Then, like, the part that I was being an extra in was in the Playhouse, which is a theatre in Liverpool. Mm. And, and they were very thorough about it. They were, like, they were, like checking people's shoes. You had to oh, yeah, watch yeah. off, like, all this you kind of You couldn't have, like, a mobile phone, because it yeah. would have to be time-specific. Oh, wow. um, and we were there all day. We got there at 8, and we were there till about 10 at night. And it was a long, long day. And we had to redo the scene loads of times. We were in the audience laughing at Billy Elliot on the stage. It was less glamorous than you thought it was. Oh, it was far less gra- glamorous. But the the middle funny thing, before I tell you the final funny thing, which you already know the final funny thing, which I'll, I'll tell you in a bit. But the middle funny thing is, whilst we're all waiting in the green room, there's about 80 of us there. Um, people who don't know each other are just mingling because... They're all strangers to each other. But the, the, a lot of them were, wanted to be actors and they were just being extras. I was just doing it to see what happens. And um, there was like food laid out for us. And these two guys were talking in front of me. I was just on my phone. And they had like a plate of food and they'd talk to each other. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. And this other guy who looked like, who's the guy off um, that Christmas film you like? What's it called? Love Actually. Love Actually, who sings the songs. Sings the song. Yeah, who sings like... Oh, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. He looked like Bill Nye. He come with a plate that he just got from the Buffy and stood in be- like just in between them and was like looking at them both as they're talking. Like just completely interjected themselves into this conversation. And they like stopped talking because it was so awkward. And one of them went to him, you all right? And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you do this like much? And we was just trying to start a conversation. And they went, yeah, we've been to a few. He went, did you do the Harry Potter one recently? And he was like, yeah, did you? He went, no, I didn't get asked back. Uh, do you do this? Do you get, you know, uh, Bob, the, he's asking that what they do for a living and stuff. And they said to him, what do you do for a living? And he went, I just do this mainly. Um, this and a little bit of shoplifting. And just took a bite of his sandwich. <laughs> and the other two just looked at him. And then he went, uh, anyway, and walked off. And I was like, he's the best fucking person I've ever seen. So <laughs> Literally was, just sounds in the doctor's occupation. Yeah, yeah. What, what, like, how'd you get part-time by? Part-time acts yeah. part-time shoplifter. <laughs> part-time shoplifter. Got to make ends meet. But, um... Then the final part, which you will know if you've listened to the show for a while, when the film debuted, we bought tickets. Yeah, so it was being shown at the Philharmonic. Because yeah. like the Philharmonic do films sometimes, so we were excited. And it, it, featured, it also featured Liverpool actor Stephen Graham, who's now like yeah. well known. Yeah. And uh, he was in the audience at the Phil for this debut with his family. He was down at the bottom, and we were like in the middle seats. Mm. And when Very he came true. on screen, there was all cheers from his little group he took with him. And then as I built up to this thing where they're like, we're going to the theatre, mum, on the screen. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going, that's where this, I am. This is where I am. This is my scene. This is my scene. So he, the, the fella, the main actor, is playing an actor on the stage in this scene. And it shows him backstage as he's about to enter onto the stage mm-hmm. of where I'm in the audience. So I'm like, yeah. Becca, here this we go. This is it. This is it. Here so when go. he goes through these doors. Yeah. I, Keep I, an eye for me. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the right. I'm in the audience. I'm in the audience. This when he comes on the set. I'm in the audience. So I'm like squeezing his hand. Yeah. We're all excited. We're, waiting. we're ter- like looking yeah. around. like, oh, oh. Um, so he puts his hand on the door to enter the yeah. stage scene yeah. and uh, then it immediately cut to a pub and it turns out they dropped the entire <laughs> scene. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't he didn't go through the doors to see the audience. He didn't even, he no, didn't even no, see the audience. No, was... me and the rest of those 80 other people just You could see, so through the like the round window, you could see, yeah, you could like, see the you audience could see that there was essentially an audience through there, through these, you know, like, um, like little... Like portal windows. Yes, portal windows, exactly. Yeah, like you might have in a restaurant. Uh, and it was a swinging door. Like when he goes through there, and the door opens, cut, cut. <laughs> That's how you're at. But we so were howling. Even I, I was howling. mortified, but because you were laughing so hard, <laughs> it was just hilarious. <laughs> because like it was, we just built ourselves <coughs> so much. Like I literally, I was like squeezing your hand. We were all excited, yeah. and then like through like tears of laughter, I was trying to whisper to you. You did, hardly had to take off your watch. Did you? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, or shave a moustache. Uh, yeah. But you know, what was weird about that? Being in the audience for that. Because as I say, a lot of people, and you know, God bless them for wanting to do something and trying to get the foot in the door, but they wanted to be serious actors. So what we had to do is this, the, the, this guy had a sign and he'd be like, laugh at certain parts of this play that we're meant to be watching. Mm. So you just laugh. You know, I can fake a laugh. Mm. Like I've worked in a call centre for long enough. I've, I can fake a fucking laugh. <laughs> but this girl next to me, they were like, okay guys, we, we needed to do about 12 times. 
this girl next to me, like in between takes, was going, I'm <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> practice, and it was like it was. I, I like stepped out to myself for a bit and looked around. There was a few people doing it, and I was like, this, this isn't right. This is a bit surreal. But yeah. So um, so that's how you make a hand of glory. Anyway. Here's another one. Oh, I've said that to you in the past, the Lord Littleton one. Here's one about two lighthouse keepers, Becca. Two lighthouse keepers told television viewers in 1976 they'd both seen the ghost of Grace Darling on separate occasions. The men worked at the Longstone Lighthouse on the Farn Islands off the Northumberland coast. Grace was born there in 1815 and become a national hero 23 years later when she and her father rode out to rescue nine survivors of the Stormbreck steamer for Farsha. Grace died of consumption four years later, and the men said they'd seen her walking round the lighthouse engine room in clogs. In clogs? Clogs. Why would she be in clogs? You know, because she, she had normal shoes, but they wouldn't work. Wait. Are all clogs wooden? No. No. Is it just an Amsterdam? I had some clogs once. What? You're from St. Helens, you shoot on me clocks. <laughs> I'm not from St. Helens. I live there and yes, I know the difference between clocks. Hey, you and got clocks. some clocks. No clocks. At least we call them clocks. Maybe they weren't. They definitely weren't clocks. You know clocks are made of wood. <laughs> that's a, that's it though. They don't have to be made of wood. Why would anyone make anything of wood? Um, wait there. <laughs> if I Google clocks, I bet you I see a pair of wooden feet. Yeah, I bet you shoes. do, but they don't all have to be made of wood. Well, uh, sorry, all right. Um, did you get your shoes made by. Um, the three pigs. <laughs> What's the three pigs got to do with that? Well, my shoe, you my were just clogs are made of wood. Joke there, and you couldn't I was, think of one. I couldn't think of one, and I thought I'd done quite well actually, because one's made of wood, one's made of hay, what? one's made of brick. The pigs aren't. No, the. What do you, do you know the little story of the three pigs? Yeah, just because someone builds a house made of wood doesn't mean they can build clogs. Well, they make <laughs> everything. Out, they, it's the only, doesn't make them a. Becca, in the three pig story, they clearly used what was a hand, so yeah, they only had wood. Doesn't make them a cobbler. You'd have been better off saying, was it made by a cobbler who had little fairy helpers? It's getting surreal now. Do you want to go and pretend to laugh somewhere? Um, destination death. Oh? Oh, no, we've read that one. So we're going to do that one. Corpse in a bed. It's quite creepy. It sounds like a sex review. Are you ready? A gruesome ghost haunt. Oh, sorry. A gruesome ghost haunt St. James Palace in London. In London? I can't speak this morning. I know, you're struggling. Yeah. And you you got women's and woman's confused earlier, even though it's the same spelling. It's not. Women and woman. Women. Spell women. W-O. No, but it was the O and the E that you said. Anyway. Corpse in a bed. A gruesome ghost haunts St. James Palace in London. The figure of a man propped up in a bed with his jaw hanging open over a gashed throat. Oh. It has been seen frequently since the night of May the 31st, 1810, when Celis, the Italian-born valet of Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, and fifth son of King George III, was discovered dead on his bed. The Duke told the inquest that when he returned from a night at the opera, Celis had tried to kill him, failed, and committed suicide. He denied later gossip that he'd have murdered his valet because he was being blackmailed after seducing the man's daughter. Yeah. Tell you what, that's a night of passion, isn't it? I'm going to kill you, I've missed, I'm going to kill me! Someone's dying tonight. Yeah, it's it's quite dreadful. It's dreadful. I quite agree. It's dreadful. It's dreadful. <laughs> <Just> dreadful. <laughs> Don't mock me. No. <laughs> yes, really, because it sounds an awful lot like you're mocking me. I wish that you should you you should have been a mayor, the detective in Scotland Yard. <laughs> hello, hello, Captain. Well, we've had a dreadful set of circumstances. Old Jack the Raspberry Blower's been out again. I'm afraid. So, what are you doing today? Back out with your day? Um. Got a few things on. It's a nice day. I can't see walk at some point. Do you? Are you going on your own? Because I don't. That was aggressive. Wasn't, wasn't it? it just? Sorry, I didn't mean to be so aggressive. All right then. I guess. It, well, it turns out I am going on my own. <laughs> wasn't planning on it, but no, yeah. I've I got things so. to do. Where are you going? Um, I'm because I'm going to record the dark paranormal after this. So where are you? What are you? Yeah, doing a bit later. You? Oh, oh, oh! Where my stomach then? I did. Yeah. Are you hungry? Uh, I might be. We need to eat at some point as well because that's yeah. apparently that you need that to survive. So are you. Um, yeah, okay, then, well, thank you. Anything that you want to say to our lovely, 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 lovely listeners before you, uh, disappear? It sounds like I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, have you told everyone there's now a Dark Paranormal Facebook page for those who Oh, yeah, there is a Dark Paranormal Facebook and Instagram page now. And Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, 
So if you listen to that show and you thought, why has he got no social media presence? Worry no more. Oh, we've got the wonderful Matt, who's the admin um, gentleman over on the Wintag Facebook page. He's yes. kindly Very offered kindly. to do it on the Dark Paranormal page too. Matt, the relief and delight when you messaged about that, we were like, oh, thank God. I know, yeah, because <laughs> I'm shit. I am. Because you're so much better at it than most of us. I'm so diabolical. And it's not because I'm like, I can't be arsed. It's like, you know... It just doesn't occur to you no, to do things. No, I think, and sometimes, like you see these conversation starters that matters, and I'm like, he's brilliant. That's exactly what we should be yeah, doing, exactly, and we yeah. just don't. Yeah, so, so he's yeah. God's own. So sincere, thanks, Matt. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think on that praise for Matt, we're going to leave it there. Okay, then, guys. So I will speak to you again on Thursday for a ramble, and I'll speak to you tomorrow actually, because for the show proper, and we're going back to your haunted corner, aren't we? Yes, Reddit corner. Yes, with Becca. Mm-hmm. Okay, then you beautiful, wonderful, and dare I say, sexy people. We're going to say goodbye. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. See, she does know what she's on about. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.